welcome yes again to our series lose him and, and let him let go him. our god is awesome yes all the time wherever you are all over the world in your home just lift up your hand and just begin to bless the name of the lord just begin to tell him lord you are awesome yes you are, you are awesome, beautiful god. you are excellent thank you Father. there's no one like you yes lord no king Jesus. like you Amen. you are greater than the greatest yes you are mightier than the mightiest that's who you are you are beautiful yes lord jesus you are awesome you do Amen. wonders yes awesome god awesome god you are beyond description Amen. beyond comprehension that is who you are that is who you are just lift up your voice and just worship the lord in your own home just magnify him and just see the lord beautiful oh father we worship beyond description wonderful god you've been awesome in our midst all through the three weeks awesome in our midst thank you lord thank you lord thank you father hallelujah in jesus name amen i'm excited so am i <laughs> every tuesday my heart is just filled with joy knowing what the lord is doing by his word and every time the lord is speaking to us his word is prophetic amen everything he's saying will surely come to pass amen hallelujah amen there's always a new revelation all, all the, the time all the time john 11 44 <laughs> Our anchor scripture, our Acts yes. to read really again for us. John 11, 44. Hallelujah. John 11, 44. Okay, I'll read it. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose, Loose him, him and let, and him, let him go. go. And um, for the past three weeks, we... We've been saying that Jesus commanded the people to lose Lazarus in three areas. Lose him in, in his face, because there was a napkin there. Lose the grave clothes in his hands. Lose grave clothes on his feet. And we said that the face is a symbol of vision and dreams. Hallelujah. Amen. When, when your face is covered, that means your, your vision is covered. Mm. You can't see far, you know. You can't. You, there's nothing that is driving you. Sometimes you meet people; they don't. They have no idea of what where they are going to. They don't even have a clue what next. They don't even have a desire or a direction of career. It shows that they're just waiting for a chance. It shows that the face is covered, and we said when the face is covered, it means that there's no light. And we know that light is the word of God, is insight, is revelation. And we dealt with that, that whatever is covering your eyes, your vision, has been removed. Amen? Amen. It has been removed. There, there will be fresh revelations, fresh insight, fresh direction in your life from this day going forward. And I believe that many people, you've started having dreams, dreams of, of career, of business opportunities, so many dreams ideas is coming to you. Why? Because the covering cast has been removed. And we spoke about the hand. We said the hand is a symbol of, of work, your career, your business, your academics, whatever you, you, you are laying your hands upon. It's a symbol of your income. It's a symbol of your, of your livelihood. And we said that his hand being tied means that he, he, he sees, but he, he just can't execute. Something is restricting his hand, and uh, we, we, we spoke and we said, whatever is holding your hand, and I'm speaking to someone right now, maybe this series is your first time or connecting to us on this series, whatever is holding you bound, whatever is restricting your, your income, whatever is blocking your career, whatever, it is broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. His desire for you is that for you to be productive for you to increase, for you to prosper. So whatever you lay your hands upon to do, it will prosper. So whatever is working against your prosperity, Jesus said, lose him, lose him, lose him. And um, we also spoke that your, your hand also that carries your work also means your ministry. 
your ministry. If you are um, a banker, that's your ministry. If you're an engineer, that's your ministry. If you're a teacher, that's your ministry. If, if you're in the medical field, that's your ministry. Wherever you are, you are a minister. If you're in the health sector, evangelism has moved to you in this season. Yes. Because that's everybody is focuses on you. There you have the opportunity to let people know that we can administer drugs, but the healer is it's still Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And you can, and patients that can come to you, you can treat them with kindness and speak hope. Whenever you come into their rooms and they are afraid, you can speak hope to them. Hope that medicine cannot give. Are you with me? So that becomes your ministry. I read, um, oh no, I saw a clip of a young man in somewhere in, in, in Europe that was sick, was in sick bed, was in the hospital, and the cleaner that was cleaning in the hospital couldn't enter his room because of the infection and just stood outside and spoke to, to him through the glass and said to him that, I just want to pray for you. And he said, after the young man prayed for him, by the next day, his health was going down. From that night, he started to recover. Amen. That is a medical officer that understands that mm. this is my ministry. They know walls. Yes. Beyond medicine, there's a healer. Mm. So whatever you're doing becomes your ministry. Amen. And we also say that sometimes the, the enemy can allow you to, to go to church, clap, sing, but he attacks your works. He attacks the works of your hand. So Lazarus could have removed the napkin from his face, but his hand was still tight. He can see, but he can't be as productive. And I pray for every Christian, every believer that is serving the Lord and things are not working. Mm. Whatever is holding your career, your finances, I speak to them Amen. and I command those powers to lose you and let you go. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We spoke about when Moses went to Pharaoh. He yes. said, let the people go. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh said, I think it was the, the, it was the last plague. Second to the last plague. He said, go, but don't Not go with, with your, your cattle. Flock, your cattle, mm -hmm. your flock. Moses said, no, 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 no negotiation. If I'm going to go, the works of my hand must be released. Mm. That was why when they were leaving, God told them, go borrow. Yes, collect everything. Everything. That had been denied you. Because you're going to, you, 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 say, you worship God with the works of your hand. Mm. You worship God with the works of your hand. Everything that God has given to you is, to, is, to, is for worship. Worshiping. Hallelujah. Amen. It's for worship. So today we're talking about the, the last one. The, the feet. So I'll read the last word in the scripture we read. In John eleven forty four, it says, "Lose him, lose him, and let him go. Lose him, lose him. What? Who is he? Who is he talking to? Lose him, lose him. That word affects in every area of your life. Whatever is holding you back." Whatever situation you are in, there is a restriction, a limiting factor. He's speaking to depression. You are depressed. Things are not going right. He's speaking to depression. Lose him and let him go. That you have failed does not mean that you are a failure. You've only failed to learn that this one doesn't work. You've only failed to rise up to win again. 
that you failed is not that you're a failure. That's why he's speaking to you again. Whatever fear, he's speaking to fear. Fear of trying again. Lose him and let him go. I have great plans for him. Fear cannot stop you from fulfilling your destiny. Many men in history failed, 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 failed until one day they stopped to fail. There's a president of um, America that he failed in all the different levels in his, in his political career. But when he got to the top one, when he got to the presidency, <laughs> that's when he didn't fail. Mm -mm. That's a beautiful one. Some people fail, some people win early and fail in the big one. He, he failed and he learned how not to fail. So every spirit of fear that's holding you bound. You want to get married, you're afraid. You won't be able to meet my bills, pay house rent. <laughs> Baby wants to come. Some people, are, some people are married and they choose not to have a child. Because of the expenses. They love children, but they are afraid. When they that, hear school fees. Yeah, they are afraid. That if I have a child, how will I feed him bottle? <laughs> Milk. Diaper. Milk. So, and they are married. But they are afraid to receive the blessing of God. Fear, I mean, fear is enemy of progress. There are so many young, young guys, good-looking guys, and I'm a lot of stuff looking, ah, man, this guy talk to me. But the guy's afraid. He's afraid to marry. And put a woman in the yes. house. Yes. <laughs> expenses, expenses. <laughs> dollar, dollar. But it, it, the funny thing is that sometimes God plans your lifting. Mm. He, he connects it to, to, to marriage. He that finds a wife finds a good thing. And obtain, and obtain a, a favor. favor from the Lord. That might be the favor you have been waiting for. That might be the lifting you've been yes. waiting for. I speak again that every spirit of fear that is working against your life, that power is bound and cast out in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are free from fear. Amen. You are free from negative imagination. Negative imagination. If, what if this happened? If that happened? Oh, if I go here. And you're like in a prison. So when Jesus spoke and said, lose him, he's not just talking about only physical things. There are things that is holding you bound in your mind. Some people believe that they can't make it until they have a big man somewhere to help them. So, some people even actually believe that you can't be honest and succeed. Mm. Especially in Nigeria. Yeah, some people believe it's impossible. So you can't be at the top. You can't be at the and top. And be a Christian. And be a Christian. It's negative mentality. And that's why they won't try. They won't even attempt to. There's some, some people are qualified for some things. But they won't go for it because they believe in their mind that they can't get it. Mm. Say, well, why can't you get it? Say, ah, no, ah, it's, uh, it's man, no man. It's a negative mentality. And that's what's tying them down. Whatever is negative that is tying you down, whatever is in your mind, whatever, that's what the Bible says, every imagination that exalted itself mm. above the word of God. I pull them down in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. I pull them down. Amen. So lose him. And let him go. And let him go. Low self-esteem. Mm. Low self-esteem. You don't believe you in yourself. You just don't feel you're good enough. Some, some people, they live their life being pitied mm. or expecting to be pitied. Like the man at the beautiful gate. Yes. Waiting for arms. But there's something better for him. Mm. So whatever is holding you down, 
self-pity, what, and some people, it's pride. It's pride. Opportunities that will lift them up, they've seen themselves too high for such a thing. Some, some people are not married because they are proud. You're talking to me? Am I your mate? <laughs> Did you look well first? <laughs> ah! But unknown to them, that is, that person is that the God next MD prepared. in the next 15 years. Mm. In the next 15 years. I have, I have a cousin that lived with us. When he started dating, he started dating a, a young officer. And the officer at that time was using B2. Volkswagen B2. Yes, the one that has the, the curve, the one that is curve. And at, 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 at that time, the other sisters, you know, around, you know, maybe someone's come to check them, he's bringing regular bands, you know, from <laughs> four, you know. So the, the Beetle is like, you know. A low grade looking car. Down. God gave her wisdom. She saw beyond Bitu. the bit. <laughs> down, down the line, a few years later, mm. they call her wife of general. Because mm. that officer became a general. Wow. When we're doing things and she comes, military people will hold pause for her. <laughs> and they open the door for her to come out. Mm. You see, never, never look down on anyone. Mm. No, 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 no. You, you can never tell. You can, you can never tell. Pride what is taking someone. Pride is a killer. Mm. What every spirit of pride in your life that makes you feel too big for things that God wants you to bless you. Mm. Let that pride leave you in the name of Jesus. Amen. This lose him is beyond his cap. You can't restrict it. Mm. You can't restrict it. It falls mm. into every area of one's every life. Every area. Even in marriage. Mm. We said it before. A pride, just say, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Can destroy home. Unforgiveness, bitterness, whatever is in your life that is restricting the blessing of God. See, the Bible says that when someone offends you and you don't forgive the person, it says when you come to worship mm. and it's time for offering, say when you get to the pew to drop the offering, say first hold your money. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, we, sometimes we, we, we need to take the word of God literally. Say, take your whole money, go back out, go and apologize, forgive the person, and then come then back. come back in and give the offering. Mm. What's he saying? He's saying unforgiveness is it ties you and makes you bound. Mm. It restricts you from having access to the blessing of God because the offering says when you give. Give cheerfully. It shall be given back unto you. Mm. You understand? Press down. You know? So there is, an, there is an, a harvest coming. But when you have unforgiveness, unforgiveness ties you mm. from the harvest. So when you want to have a breakthrough, you need to be free. It says, lose him. Whatever is holding you bound, I command to lose you in the name of Jesus. Amen. To lose you. Amen. So why did, why did, why did Jesus tell Lazarus, speak to Lazarus? He spoke to circumstances around him. Mm. Lose him. Every time I see this scripture in the Bible, one thing is constant. Let's see Exodus chapter 8 verse 1. In pastoral, you read for, read for us. Exodus 8, verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, 
and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Let my people what? Go. Let my that people they what? may serve me. Loose him and let him go. go. I discovered that when God says, Loose him, let him go. Go. Why? Why? The, why? Why does, he, why does he want you to be free mm. from depression? Free from pain. Free from fear. Why? He has a plan for you. Amen. He says, lose him and let him go. Let him go that he may what? Serve, Serve me. me. Service is, a, is key to deliverance. Because that word, lose him, let him go, it means that it's time to be free. Amen. Time to be delivered. It's time for you to, to move forward, to make progress. Mm. So that's why when he said, untie his leg, because the, the feet is a symbol of progress, symbol of advancement, mm. symbol of stepping forward. Your feet moves you from where you are to where you're supposed Next. to be. Yes. Where, if you stand in one place, your hand can be moving, doing everything, but you are going nowhere. Mm. So the, the, the motto for progress, for advancement, is your feet. So when, when Jesus linked the vision, linked the hand, and linked the feet together, it means that when you have a dream and you have faith by the word to act on it, you have the ability to move. With you your move feet. forward. You won't just walk and remain in the same place. You won't just be free, have ideas, and you can't see a significant transformation. It's saying to you that from today, you will not remain in the same place. Amen. You will not be where you used to be. Amen. You can't. Why? Because lose him and let him go. So when he, he used the word go, go is... Is a word given for progress. Mm. Action word. Yes. I, I, I can picture, I picture when um, like a track and field contest mm. and it's time to run 100 meters and they put the, the gun on a mark set. When they read the trigger, go! It's for, time for you to run. Mm. To run. I speak to someone today you begin to run. Amen. And you begin to run. Amen. Not just walk. Mm. You run. begin to run. Amen. You will run and you will not be tired. Yes. You won't be weary. Amen. Why? He will give you speed. Amen. He will give you speed. In the name of Jesus. So why is he giving you speed? Why did he say go? Go where? He's mm. telling to go because he's it's time to serve. Him. When you are ready to serve God, you can't be bound. Mm. Whatever is holding you bound, God will rise up and break those things himself. Amen. It's time to serve God. It's time to serve God. He says, let my people go mm. that they may serve, serve me. me. Serve me. And service comes also with worship. Mm. He wants, he, when God desires your worship, see, that's one of the strongest key of deliverance is worship. When you worship God, things break loose. Why? Because when you worship God, he draws you for service. Mm. So whatever is holding you bound, he will pull you out of their hand. Whenever you are in a situation where you, and you feel trapped, you feel helpless, like, you know, when we pick the words that we said, depression, Fear, all those things. Loneliness. Loneliness. Just begin to worship. The atmosphere changes. Just begin to worship. Mm. Lose him and let him go. Just begin to worship. Whenever you are ready to serve God, he will pull you out mm. from whatever is holding you back. Amen. Whatever it is. When you serve God to a certain extent, poverty will run away. Amen. It will run. Why? You are ready to serve God, even with your finances. Mm. I remember in, a, in my former church, the pastor then 
He looked around, and he discovered that he had a lot of workers. They were unemployed. They were, ready, they were unemployed. So he said, let me show you how to get a job. And, and he said, I want to help all the unemployed people in the church. <laughs> they didn't know what he was going to <laughs> said, put down your name. So they all bought it. They were happy. Ah, person wants to help, person wants to help, person wants to help us. So they all put their names. He said, okay, on Mondays, you're not working. Mm. Come to church, I'll tell you what I want to do for you. Every, all of them came. When they got to church on Monday, in the morning, give them tracks. <laughs> go and give it out. I said, go. You know, you don't have a job. You are just sitting at home. Mm. Eh, go and give tracks out. They were, they were disappointed. <laughs> some, some, some stopped to come. But the others picked the tracks and decided to give it. Mm. That same month, almost all of them got a job. Hallelujah. Some of them, they've applied somewhere long ago. They've been done interview. I mean, mm. all the play people, I said, they go for interview every, every time. So, it's just it's like getting calls. Oh, you, you applied here um, January last year. Hmm? Are you not so person? They can't even remember. They're, 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 they're in Lagos, so they, they can't. They, <laughs> Lagos, they're yeah. sharp. <laughs> so, yes, 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 it's me, it's me. <laughs> one by one, they start getting jobs. Mm. I know someone that, the job she's doing now was a from result. a result of that encounter. Amen. When you are serving God, whatever was holding you bound breaks. Amen. It breaks. Hallelujah. It breaks. So worship will set you free. Amen. Let's, let's read Romans 10, 15. Romans 10, 15. Matthew says, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. When he says, go, he's sending you out. Like the pastor called all of them. Mm -hmm. Take, go. That word, go, Suddenly, their feet became beautiful. Some of those people that went out to give tracts, as they were going out giving tracts, they came across an office. As they were giving tracts, they, they saw that. It's, sorry, I, I don't mind the job here. I said, hey, oh. That's how they got a the job. Mm. Serving God opens doors. Yes. And I, I've, I've also met people that they went on evangelism, they got a wife. <laughs> Or they went to camp and they got a wife. Yes, yes. Or they went to camp and they got a wife. Or they got a husband. Well, yes. Hallelujah. They met. Go. That just go. I know. I know a sister. She was going to. She was going to camp, and the, the boss got stuck. The member of this church, the boss got stuck, and they couldn't enter camp. And they were in the car. And she said. Let me go and talk to someone on your behalf. So as she went to meet, um, you know, the, the, holy, the, the holy traffic people. Team name liar. Say please, help us. How do I say that? That one was looking at her face. Say, ah, okay, I will help you. I will help you. <laughs> Today she's married. They're, they're married. You know, the divine connection happened there. There, there. Amen. So Amen. You never know. Whenever you are willing to serve. Mm. Your miracle is there. He says, how beautiful is the steps. God beautifies your leg. Amen. The moment you decide to serve him, you begin, your, your work becomes ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How beautiful. Go. He's sending you. That word is, 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 is so powerful. Go. Let him go. Lose him. Let him go. Why? I am sending him on our assignment. Amen. I speak to you today that God is sending you on an assignment. Amen. That's why you can't be bound. Hallelujah. You are going on an, on assignment, an assignment. On an assignment for God to impact your generation. Amen. You will impact your generation. Amen. Go in Mark 16 verse 15. 
I love that word. Go. Let nothing stop you. Go. Go. Hallelujah. Amen. Mark 16, 15. It says, and he said unto them, go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Go. Why? God wants to use you. Why is he setting you free? Why is he removing the napkin in your face? Why is he breaking the chains in your hand? Why does he want to set your leg free? Why? He wants to use you. Amen. You are important to him. He wants to use your life to be a light to this world. So don't allow depression, don't allow low self-esteem to deny you of fulfilling greatness. They are too small for the assignment God wants for you. It's not only will you be free, you'll be a master to those things that held you bound. He says, when you, you will cast out devils. Hallelujah. Yes. Not only will you be free, you now become a master over the things that used to hold you bound. Mm. You'll be a master over fear. Yes. You'll be a master over depression. When people meet you that are depressed, when they hear your testimony, mm. they are set free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God will use you. Amen. For signs and wonders. Yes. I'm speaking to someone. Yes. God will use you. God will use me. For signs and wonders. For signs and wonders. Things that when people hear, they'll be afraid. Mm. How can it be? You, you that you were struggling, you were, you know, you are struggling with addiction. Lose him. You could be bound in addiction. Mm. Bound in pornography. You could be bound in drugs. And you feel that you are, you're in captivity. God is speaking to you in your home. That addiction, you are delivered from it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are set free. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever is addiction, is it masturbation? Whatever it is, whatever. Don't see when it comes to God, never be ashamed. Mm. He loves you. He loves you. His love is unconditional. Because when God sees you, and when he's calling you, he's not calling you based on what you are doing now. He's calling you based on what you will become. He says, is the half and the omega, the beginning and the end. So he knows the end. He says, oh, why, why would God love me? Who am I? I'm not good. He's not looking at what you are doing now. He's looking at what you will become. He says, greatness in you. Amen. One thing you need to know that. See, when God says, he says, go ye into the world. See, it's changing our mindset. You know, sometimes you're thinking of yourself, maybe your sister, your wife, your brother. You're looking at your, your immediate locality. Family. But he's saying, world. Mm. A shift in your mind. World. No limitation. World. A time is coming, the world will see you. Amen. The world will, I mean, it might sound unbelievable now, but God's plan for your life is beyond limits. Mm. No boundaries, no limitation. God is ready to do the unbelievable. If you can, if if you can picture or you can imagine it, he can surpass it. He says, I will do exceedingly. Abundantly. Abundantly. Above all that you can think or can imagine. Think or imagine. He's better than the best of imagination. Amen. I said again, he's, he will do far, far better than the best of your the imagination. Best of your imagination. Amen. Nothing is allowed to hold you down. Mm. Nothing. Lose him. And let him go. Lose him. Lose him. In Mark 11, verse 2. 
Mark 11, 2. He says, and said unto them, go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye enter into it, ye shall find a colt tied, where, whereon never man sat. Lose him and bring him. No a cult that no one desires. Mm. A cult that you can say in quote, be useless. No man has sat on it. Mm. A cult that has never been seen. He says, lose him. Why? The master needs him. The master wants to use him for his glory. Mm. And you can imagine a cult that has been in hiding all his life. Now, for the first time in his life, he's stepping out and first time he's carrying someone, he's carrying the king of kings. Mm. So if you, want to, if you want to track him by his past, if he had carried a king before, say, ah, he's a royal horse. Or maybe he has carried a centurion man or a rich man. So he is also for the, for the royals, for the rich. This is a call that no one desires. Your past can never define your, your future. Your past can never define where God is taking you to. Amen. You might have suffered abuse. You might have been rejected. You might have failed. I mean, Things might have gone bad for you and all your memory is just negative and you want to draw a conclusion on your tomorrow. Just stop there. Mm. God is saying the cult and no one desired to have anything to do with was the one Jesus went for. He has a way for going for the rejected. Mm. When you are rejected, somehow you become qualified for God. When no one gives you a chance, somehow you become the one that God shows interest on. When sometimes you feel not good enough, you haven't been tested enough, you haven't been tried enough, and he's saying, you are the one I want. Amen. You are the one I want. I picture Boaz in Ruth, a rich man that has big land. I can picture it. any woman he wants is available for him. So why a stranger who has been married before, who has been married before, who has lost husband, become his choice? Mm. That is God. Because if, if we're to judge about things, once she's married, okay, and she, she, she that, that's, that means she's been she's disqualified. Mm. Disqualified. And I, I'm not sure if she had a child before, or the child was dead, I don't know. But all those things were supposed to work against her, but got turned it around. Mm. Because she was in a place of service. A place of service. She went to work and take care of her mother in law. When you yield your life to serve, God positions you for lifting. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have, that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. So your, your, your foot is a symbol of possession. Mm. See, see, when you can't step in, you can't possess. So when God says, lose him, break the chain over his feet, it means that there are things he has prepared for you to step in. And possess. And possess. Because the children of Israel, until they stepped into the promised land, they could, they could, not, could possess. not possess it. So I hear God saying, it's time to begin to possess. Amen. Hallelujah. 
to lose him. Lose him. Things that have been hard, that has been that looks impossible. You want to get married, you want to own a land, you want to be promoted. There's places you, you desire to enter. Mm. He's saying to you that everything that's tied your foot is broken. Amen. Opportunity for never again. Mm. Why? Your feet is a symbol of possession. Amen. Hallelujah. Amongst the children of Israel started possessing the promised land. They kept advancing. They kept have, moving forward. And, 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 and enlarging. Enlarging. Psalm 27 verse 23. Psalm 27 verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Mm. And he delighted in his ways. So your feet stands for divine direction. When he said, lose him. Lose the feet. Why? It's time to be guided by God. So if, if you're in a place that you don't know the next thing to do, what should I, where should I go? What should I, what's my next step? I'm saying to you from today, you begin to hear a voice. Go forward. Mm. Turn right. Turn left. Before you have been missing your way, you, you will not miss it again. Amen. Why? Divine direction. Divine direction. Divine direction. The feet is so beautiful. So when he spoke about the foot, we said it's a symbol of freedom, deliverance, progress, Possession. Possession. You know? You've been sent. All this word is what God is doing in your life. You might be saying, how can this be? Why? Because he needs your service. As long as you're willing to serve God, you're qualified. You're qualified. I feel like praying for, for us. But I believe there's some people that need to receive the blessing also. Mm. I believe some people that need to receive that blessing. Because the, when I think of the blessing we're talking about, divine direction, possession, possession deliverance, deliverance you know, freedom, ability to go, progress, advance. I desire for everyone. Including myself. Yes, including myself. I for, no one should go to this earth mm. without being helped, without being guided, without, being, without enjoying divine direction, without taking possession. Mm. Without making progress. Without making progress. Without obtaining freedom. Freedom. Today, if you desire all these things that you've been hearing, it's for you. Mm. And if you come across this, the broadcast, it means you are, you, you are, you've been ordered by the Lord. It's your divine appointment. Mm. It's not by accident. He has a plan for you. It's something he wants to do in your life. And chains have been broken. Mm. They have been set free. But the, one of the first steps is to surrender all. To so accredit the fact that I can't set myself free. I can't do it in my own power. I need you, Jesus, to set me free. And the first thing you say is short prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, have mercy upon me. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me, Lord. I've missed it many times. Forgive me. Come into my heart, Lord. Come be my master. Be my king. Save me. Give me a new beginning. Write my name in the book of life. I desire freedom. Set me free. He who the Lord sets free is free indeed. Guide me, Lord. I want to be guided by you. I surrender my will to you. Lead me. Direct my path. From today, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name.
If you have prayed that prayer, you have been set free. You have been delivered in the name of Jesus. The veil has been removed from your face. You have seen the light. And your hands, you begin to prosper. Your feet, you begin to make progress. No more bondage in your life. Depression is gone. Amen. Guilt is gone. Amen. Fear is gone. Amen. Lust is gone. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so shall it be. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It's like the series should not end. Yes. But today is the last day for the series of lose him and let, and him, let go. him go. Hallelujah. But something because has happened over the past four weeks. Yes. Wonderful something things great. has happened. Next month, we're entering into a new one. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you have questions, either from the, from the very first day, from the second, from part two, three, because this was the fourth series. Yes. Hallelujah. So let the questions begin to flow, and we'll begin to answer the questions. And at the end, I'll release a blessing over the house in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So the first one is, how can you overcome fear? and get rid of negative imagination. Because now a lot of people are in fear because of the COVID and the pandemic. Um, how can you overcome fear? And how can you get rid of negative imagination? Fear is attracted on what you focus on. What you focus on draws to you. That was why when Jesus, just as an example, when they were in wilderness, the, the, the sin and the serpent was biting them. And as long as they, were, they, they look at the serpent, they become afraid. When they bite them, they die. He told them, take your eyes away from the serpent. So when they take their, their face away from the serpent, it takes, because they're no longer looking at it. They move away from fear. And I says, look at the brazen serpent. You are looking at what can kill you. Now, look at what can give you life. And as long as you are looking at the brazen serpent, even though you are being beaten, your eyes is not looking at death. You're looking at life. You will live and decide to live. So that principle still remains. Whatever is bringing you fear, take your eyes away from it. Identify the source of the fear. It might be what you are hearing, what you are seeing. So if it's what you are hearing, then you, you need to change what you are hearing. Mm. I know, I, I know people that um, that they're very. They're, I mean, God has helped them. They're they're very old. There's a, there's a woman I can't remember her name right now. She's like she's in her late eighties, and she's still active. She's still going out, and they ask her. Say, how, what's the secret? You are almost like 88 years old. You're still very active. You still travel. She says that every single morning, I have tens of divine health scriptures. Mm. And every morning I wake up, I read and confess those scriptures on my, my body, my, 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 my health, and that is the source of my strength. Because when you speak to your body and you read, I am strong, I am healed, by stripe I am healed, no weapon. You, know, just you an, begin to confess those words. And you're words. confessing those words and that's what you're focusing on. It builds strength within it you. It brings strength. So whatever it makes you afraid, take your eyes away from it. Mm. If it's TV it's or the so news, Stop watching those programs. If you are, maybe if you are on, on a group, and on a, maybe a singles group, for example, you're a single lady and you join a group, and all they're, they're talking about, oh, men are, are not honest, men are jilting ladies, and you, suddenly, suddenly you become afraid. Mm. If all the men are jilting ladies, so how, how, will, I marry? how will I marry? Ha! Ah. So it brings fear. Instead of you to focus on groups whereby testimonies are coming, mm. where they're speaking, they're already even preparing you 
for marriage. marriage. You are learning do's and don'ts. How to, you know, communicate with your husband. How to, you know, you know how to have a godly home. That builds a community. It builds that, that environment. Mm. And it gives you a hope. And your eyes is focused. And your expectation changes. Changes. And it's going towards where you want where to go. Where you're going to. I believe that is key. Amen. Um, you also said something about um, that God wants to use us and that we should go. That go into the world. Where is our world now? Is it through the social media? Is it in our workplace? You said our place of work where we can serve God is in our workplaces. So when you say go, where are we going to? Our God is a God of structure and a God of order. If you read in, in Acts chapter 1, he spoke to disciples. He told them that they should go. But he now started telling them from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria, then to the uttermost part of the earth. Because that was where they were. They, were. Mm -hmm. they start from where you are. When God says go, start from your, your direct influence, your family, mm -hmm. your brother, your sister, your neighborhood, your neighbor, your classmates, your colleague in the office. Start with the people that you, you meet on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. If you, if you, in a, in a particular career, be a doctor, a lawyer, start among your lawyer and doctor's forum. Begin to influence in your immediate community. Then from there, you can now expand to the next one. Don't leave your house unkept and be chasing uh, the Philippines. someone in, uh, in Asia. <laughs> start from where you are. There's, for everyone, God has made sure that there's someone next to you to impact. There's always someone. There's, God's giving you a voice and a favor before someone. Discover that person and start from there. Amen. You also said that it's our time to possess. But sometimes when we try and possess what belongs to us, we sink. We face problems, we face obstacles in possessing what belongs to us, like the wall of Jericho. It had been given to the Israelites, but then they had to fight for it. There was an obstruction. If I understand that question clearly, some questions I believe that is in the thought of a lot of people in their mind. And in reality, and that's where the word of God comes in. Our, our, our imagination stops us. It hinders us. The Israelites, when they were with Moses, God told them, and Moses said, go and spy the land. When they came back, they said, we are like grasshoppers in their eyes. Everything they said was based on their imagination. Not based on the reality. They said they were small before them. That, that if they go, they'll be destroyed. If you, and on that basis, they didn't conquer. So that is the sinking. They, they failed because of their own imagination and their own beliefs. When Joshua went back and sent only two spies, when they got there, the report they got was that they were even afraid of them. Mm. They had heard about their gods and they were fainting. Mm. The same people, they could have conquered and possessed the land. So most times, when God said, go, you are the one creating things that are hindering you. God will never ask you to do a thing that he will not back you up on. 
God will never ask you to do a thing that you don't, have, you don't already possess the ability or the potentials. Anything God tells you to do, he's speaking to you on the basis of knowing your potentials. Mm. You might not know now. You might not see it now. But there is, the treasure is inside of you. So it requires your faith. I don't feel like it. I don't think I can do it. Don't think I, I'm qualified. I don't think I'm qualified. But at your word. Mm. Not by my own strength. But at your word. The moment we begin to act by faith. Based on what God has said. Not based on our own thinking. Our own imagination. Then you begin to see how strong and how big your God is. When God says possess, it's just already. Amen. If you look at the Israelites, when, God, when, when it comes to Jericho, they did not have to fire a single arrow. They didn't have to throw one stone. They didn't have to fight one battle. And they conquered the land. There was no record that they fought a giant to enter the promised land. God did it for them. Mm. And we should learn from that. He will back you up. On anything he says to do, he will back you up. Amen. It's time to possess. Yes. Amen. Be free. It's time to move forward. Amen. That vision you have, it's time to step forward. It's time to make that first step. And it's time to rise up to walk. It's time to serve the Lord. It's time to be all out for him. I pray today, nothing will stop you from fulfilling your destiny. Amen. Nothing will stop you from to become who God has ordained you to be. He has said that you are blessed. He has said you are highly favored. He has said you are the head and not the tail. He has said that you are the light of the whole world. You are a star in his hand. You are a priceless jewel. He called you a royal priesthood. He called you a peculiar nation. You are the apple of his eyes. His thought towards you is good and not of evil. Amen. Whatever you are going through, you are going through. Mm. You will not be stuck. Amen. You are going through. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for everyone connected to us online yes. and everyone that's been following this series. Whatever is holding you bound, those chains break in the name of Jesus. Amen. From today, the Lord will open your eyes. Amen. He will give you divine direction. Amen. Divine vision. Amen. He will, he, he will guide you. Amen. He will empower you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your past will not stop you. Amen. Your past failures will not stop you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. New opportunities open unto you. Amen. You will succeed. Amen. You will prosper. Amen. You will be who God has ordained you to be. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm excited.